tough market. There was a story that came out last week. FedEx Freight, they had to cut 1,400 customers due to all this volatility. They had to protect the service for the customers they have. Yeah. Things kind of go awry. They have walked that back because supply chain so interconnected that uh, by in doing so, they hurt some of their biggest shippers, Lowe's, who yeah, had partnerships right. with some of these other 1,400 carriers that were pulling for them. Yeah. So you move, you, you can't just move one toothpick from this house of uh, toothpicks or I don't know, do people make houses of toothpicks? I don't even know. Uh, I'll drop the announcement. Anyway, Robert Moffitt here is the EVP and Director of Operations at New Legend, Inc., and he's going to tell us how to maintain relationships in this volatile market, which is becoming increasingly difficult. Robert, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Good morning, guys. So what do you what do you make of that that FedEx news? I mean, that seems like an extreme circumstance. We heard last year, you know, you go, we got too much freight, but here's the problem. We got to preserve the our existing relationships. So we have to make some cuts. But the problem is in such an interconnected world, butterfly flaps its wings in uh, in Memphis. It starts to impact the whole supply chain. How does New Legend manage these relationships in this market? I think for, uh, for Legend, we uh, basically have a good core piece of business with all of our customers. And we're trying to engineer our lanes that help each one of our customers, either if it's a head haul or a back haul, to make sure that we're you know, giving a fair share to everybody. Um, and I think the biggest piece with that is communication and having uh, extreme important conversations with each one of the people that we deal with as far as our customers and making sure that they understand that we're trying to engineer lanes that are going to help us on both sides. Because if one customer can help us, that would be great. If it's something that it's, I'll, I'll call it a Lowe's truck that's going north and it's going to come south, then basically they're, they're using that truck in its total utilization and they have a good understanding that they're using it in the, in the network. So at the end of the day, I think that's the biggest piece is communication, making sure that we're communicating with the customers, trying to figure out ways to uh, engineer the things so that we have that utilization and they see that utilization with each one of the customers. And it's hard, I'll say this, it is very hard to tell your customer that I can't provide you with capacity today when I see capacity as being very high where we need to provide more service but if there isn't enough people out there to uh, basically pull the equipment because of driver shortages, right? Um, that's I think that's the biggest piece that's driving a lot of these things in conversations so that we can stay in front of that. Uh, excellent, excellent answer. Actually, yeah. actually, that 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 uh, is a lot of really good advice on how to manage these types of things. And some things that you would think that FedEx would really do that it seems like maybe they didn't, right? Because you know. you're looking at these things, but they had to cut so many out of it, 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 it was bound to have that butterfly effect. It sounds like you got a handle on how to manage these things. You've had to had a lot of challenges, though, especially over this past this this year as well. Like you said, sourcing drivers. You've got uh, extreme demand still going on. Hard to get more capacity into there. What are your biggest challenges? Is it that managing those uh, existing customers' expectations as business grows and volumes grows, or has it been something else? What's your biggest challenge been? So I'm going to say, from the standpoint of uh, customers. I see every bid that comes across, we price it, we look at it, we, we put things together, we have conversations, um, and you know we truly drill down on the things we need to. And then the customer comes back and says, we need you to do all this. And we look at it and we have to say, I'm, I, I know we bid it out, but right now I've got five drivers in that network right now and I can't do 35 loads a week. Right. So so what do we do? You know, we, we talk to them. We say, well, we're continuing to hire drivers every day. Things that we're trying to get accomplished. Right. Um, and with the drivers that they're coming to work, you know, they want cream loads. So if a company driver comes to work, I think that's some of the things that we're dealing with today is they don't want to be stuck at a ship or getting loaded. They don't. Mm -hmm. Then they then they lose hours of service. And then they go to deliver the load and they're losing time there. You know, in a business model for transportation, you know, a trucking company wants to get the availability of being able to service the customers that are going to give them the drops and drops, that they're going to be able to manage their warehouse time, because that's truly what it boils down to. Because anytime that you have to live load a truck, you've got to have labor at the warehouse to make that, that make that happen. When you're delivering a live load, you've got to have that labor at the warehouse for it to deliver. 
right? So any delays in any of that, any, any delays in that when you're delivering or picking up, that's creating a havoc in the network. And I'll say this, would be, would, I would say, I don't think shippers want to pay for detention Yeah. in the big picture. So what's the solution? You know, and we're all trying to figure that out. And the best way I look at it is this. There's a cost to move the truck and there's a cost to load and unload it. If we can save costs somewhere like in a warehouse on two sides because we're able to drop and they're able to manage, I think that's where the win is on transportation in the current market. Yeah, I was going to say, you mentioned these these long dwell times at, at shippers' docks. Is that something in a tight market like this you, is being that you're highly scrutinizing now and you're looking at and making decisions and strategizing based on who to service because of data like that? Yes, very much. I mean, we looked at something yesterday and we were doing some loads for a customer and then the customer came back to us and said, we'd like you to do more volume. Then we went back into the system and looked and the average unload time is six and a half hours. And well, we have to deliver live. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe not such business you want to really grow <laughs> there. But don't you, I mean, so, Robert, you, don't you think, I mean, that transparency and over well, not over-communication, but when we say over-communication, it's really not. It's what's necessary. Yeah. The transparency and the data and the tracking and the communication it could, uh, I mean, that alleviates that, right? I mean, you, you've got a delivery time. You're going to be on time. They can schedule the, the proper workforce. Is that part of the issue that that is there is there's not enough visibility in between where the loads are and what's moving? And how do you guys... Uh, handle that for the visibility for us i mean with all the in integrations that we have in the system the shipper knows them when the, when they're going to get their loads at least the true customers that we have they have true visibility i mean in our tms that we have you know we 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 have our own uh edi piece that sends x6s out and all that stuff and some customers don't look at that you know if they're really using a third party like you know, four kites or uh, Micropoint or uh, Project 44 or, you know, multitudes of other pieces that are in, that are integrated into our system, they're seeing visibility with that also. So at the end of the day, there's a lot of visibility to the loads being in transit, where they're at, what's going on. Th those are Those are communication pieces. But at the end of the day, there's still a lot more communication that's going on where somebody is not sending an email, they're actually picking up the phone and saying, okay, You've got an eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, I just want to make confirm, even though they they might be on four kites and they can see that in their system. So it's 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 a it's a double whammy with as far as communication comes and everything that's happening. You know, there's multiple people making sure because some of these shipments that are getting shipped, they say they're not critical, but they are. Let's let you end on a high note. Take a victory lap really quick. What was the biggest win during the spring? What's that again? What was the biggest win during the spring? So what are you either most proud of or what was the biggest accomplishment over on your side over the spring? Wow. Biggest accomplishment um, that we're continuing to. I'll say that for us, the biggest win is we're continuing to grow. We're continuing to support customers. We're continuing to, you know, uh, build a brand that we have out here. We're, we, everything that we're trying to do, we're trying to convey that to the customer so we can continue to uh, keep a city growth. Love it. Well, hey, everyone, as you, as, you've, as you heard in the read earlier, you want to learn more, go to newlegendinc.com. Talk to that great the team over there. They're going to do whatever they can. That, Of course, that is realistic to help in this tough market. You're going to talk to a great team, and you can trust they're going to do the best for you. Once again, thanks for your time today. Can I add one more thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to make a pitch for drivers. Do it. I just want to say this. We're a great company to work for. I think we're very competitive in the market. And if you're looking for a great job or someplace that you could lay your hat and know that you could work and continue to make a good steady income, Legends is a place for you to land. Please Absolutely. call us. At, wait, we'll give you a little five five two one zero two three zero zero. Beautiful. We love it. Thank you so much. Thanks for thanks again for your time today.